Colleagues, the this, this speaker has the choice as to when to start question period. There will be a full question period that will follow after this declaration from the speaker. It's important for us to make this declaration. The Honourable House Leader from the Opposition. I'd just like to uh, remind the Chair of uh, Standing Order 5A, time for statements by members, oral questions, orders of the day. At 2 p.m. on Mondays, sorry, not later than 2.15 p.m., as the case may be, oral questions shall be taken up. Not may be taken up, shall be taken up. It's well past 2.15, Mr. Speaker. After cons consultation with the table, it is important for members to understand that we have uh, dérogé de cette habitude de commencer à 14h15 pile. Vous savez, avec les déclarations des députés, éminents des députés, exactly avec le Standing Order 31. Le, le président, la, présida la présidence va faire cette déclaration. Ce n'est pas mon intention de, faire, de prendre l'habitude de faire ça, mais selon, selon, les, selon les, euh, les règlements, j'ai la, la possibilité de commencer les, or, les périodes des questions orales après ma déclaration. When, when, when rules are not followed, when there is a derogation from a rule, when that is pointed out to the speaker, the speaker then enforces the rules. These standing orders are the, 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 the property of the House. It's up to the House to decide when we're not going to follow a rule or when we're going to change a rule. This is a standing order that the House has adopted. You are a servant of the House. You should follow the standing order. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member from Regina Capel for pointing out the standing orders, and indeed he is correct, there are written standing orders. However, however, there is a long tradition in this House that the Speaker has the ability to, uh, to making sure, can I ask the Honourable Member to please allow me to finish as I have the floor at this time. I'll be happy to recognize the Honourable Member for, for, for a point of order. It is really important that we understand that the Speaker does have this ability to make a statement. We will have full oral questions uh, at, the end of this, uh, at the end of this statement from the Speaker. It is an important message, which I think members would appreciate hearing, because it gives an indication as to how the Speaker is going to be proceeding in the uh, months and years to follow. Colleagues. As promised before the constituency week. Point of order, the Honourable Member from Carlton. Every day in this House, the opposition has the occasion to respond to the actions of and hold the government accountable for its actions on behalf of Canadians. That happens at 2.15 every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. That is not a may, that is not a possible, that is a shall. There is nothing in the clause that creates question period in the standing orders that allows the Speaker to arbitrarily change the time 
in order to give a speech. I will note that the Speaker has uh, a plethora of occasions to stand on his feet and make any point he wants or any declaration he likes. He does not need to do it in the middle of the sacred period during which we hold the government to account. Now, I see, no, if I'm, I'm Mr. Speaker, if I may, this is a, the first time in all of my years here that I have seen a speaker interrupt question period to make a speech. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Uh, and I furthermore, uh, we, the fact that you have risen to your feet in order to impose apparently a series of guidelines that are not approved by the Board of the Eternal Economy or voted on by the House of Commons, and that you're doing it in violation of one of the existing rules that is already in place, suggests a very serious and unusual departure from the normal way in which Parliament exists. The government is here to serve Parliament, not the other way around. We ask that you allow us to proceed the question period and you make your statement afterwards. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for Carlton for his intervention. I would like to inform the House, though, this is not the first time that the Speaker has interrupted the proceedings to make a statement from the Chair between the point of SO31s and all questions. <laughs> colleagues, colleagues, so that everybody can understand this very clearly, my immediate pre predecessor, for example, has done this at least on two occasions. It has also been done. It also has been done by speakers in the past. I am going to continue with this statement. I think it's important for all members to understand this, and I'd like to reassure the member from Carleton and all members that there are going to be no new standing orders that would require the approval of you members. But we're, we're talking about. I invite you to listen to this statement. I would invite you to listen to this statement in order to be able to, to improve the order and decorum in this House. Come. Comme elle avait promis avant la semaine de relâche, la présidente souhaite faire une déclaration à propos de l'ordre et du décorum à la Chambre. Je dirais très simplement que l'ordre et le décorum sont des marques de respect des uns envers les autres et envers l'institution. Que ce respect est nécessaire pour mener un débat productif au sein d'une assemblée délibérante. En fait, il s'agit d'un élément essentiel pour que le Parlement puisse s'acquitter de son rôle constitutionnel. I decided to stand for Speaker because in the eight years that I've been a member, and prior to that as a keen follower of parliamentary proceedings, I have noticed a deterioration in the collective decorum in this place. It is important to note that this deterioration was not inevitable. It is not a natural outgrowth of the advent of social media. We can choose to conduct ourselves differently. I suspected other members felt the same way, and during the many discussions that I held recently with members from all sides of the House confirmed this feeling. Decorum and disorder was the one issue that was most often mentioned to me in the one-on-one -on -one exchanges that I had, and not just in passing. Perhaps most importantly of all, members felt that bad behaviour dishonours not only ourselves as elected members of Parliament, but also dishonours Canadian democracy. Le 3 octobre 2023, when I was invited to take the chair for the first time, I said, 
Nous devons veiller à nous traiter les uns les autres avec respect, à servir d'exemple aux Canadiens, car il ne peut pas y avoir de dialogue sans respect mutuel. Il est impossible de débattre et de faire valoir notre point de vue si nous ne convenons pas tous de nous traiter les uns les autres avec respect et de faire preuve de décorum. Fin de la citation. J'en étais alors convaincu, et j'en suis toujours aussi convaincu. I mean it now. Members should not be surprised by my statement today. Not long ago, on May 8, 2023, my predecessor rightly said, in a ruling on the quorum, which can be found at page 14,090 of the Bates, quote, The rules and practices governing order and decorum are intended in part to ensure that proceedings are conducted in a civil, courteous and respectful manner. In particular, members are expected to address each other through the chair and to avoid making any offensive or disruptive remarks. For example, for example, stating directly or indirectly that a colleague is a liar or has lied is unacceptable." Unquote. The Honourable Member, Honourable Member from has raising a point of order. I would usually ask if this was a filibuster, for, but for the purposes of plan, planning, I'm wondering if the Speaker might indicate to the House how long he expects to continue. The member, this should continue uh, for the, it's not a point of order first, thank you, uh, but uh, I will let members know that it will continue for the time that it will take. It shouldn't, shouldn't be too long. is a place where freedom of speech is primordial and where views are strongly held and vigorously defended. While the chair must allow the widest range of individual expression possible, members are expected to be mindful of their words and behaviours within the realm of what would be considered parliamentary. Je réitère les propos du Président Milliken, qui, le 5 octobre 2006, à la page 3719 des débats, a déclaré ceci, et je cite, « Mais l'exercice de cette liberté d'expression doit reposer sur un principe sous-jacent du respect de la Chambre et des autres députés. Un député ne devrait jamais se conduire d'une façon qui perturbe les débats. » Le moins qu'on puisse It dire, c'est que depuis quelques semaines, et n'importe qui en conviendra, la Chambre est singulièrement bruyante, surtout pendant la période des questions. Ce désordre résulte en partie de l'usage d'un langage répréhensible et de déclarations incendiaires. Mais le désordre semble surtout produit par des interruptions, interjections et d'autres débordements. Bref, de gestes qui ne semblent avoir d'autre but que de rendre inaudibles ceux qui posent des questions ou qui y répondent ou de leur faire perdre le fil pendant Mais quand le bruit atteint un niveau tel, euh, un niveau tel que personne, même pas le président, n'entend no plus ce qui se dit, c'est toute la chambre qui y perd en crédibilité. J'exhorte donc tous les députés so, à coopérer à cet égard. Je vais continuer de m'efforcer de donner à tous les à tous la plus grande latitude possible dans l'expression de leurs opinions, mais je demande votre collaboration pour que nous puissions tous entendre les propos des députés qui ont la parole. Fin de la citation. À partir de maintenant, je me montrerai juste et je veillerai à ce que tous les députés, peu importe de quel côté ils siègent, puissent s'exprimer librement, demander fermement des comptes au gouvernement remettre en question les idées de leurs collègues et examiner à fond les affaires publiques. En tant que président, je m'aviserai également de trouver les moyens pour rehausser, pour rehausser je m'excuse, l'ensemble des décorums à la Chambre. Je poursuivrai ces objectifs avec acharnement. I commit to doing to this, I commit to doing this as your servant and to enforce the rules that you yourselves have given the House on your behalf. I will do so with humility and also with an outreached hand. 
Within our purview, all the chair occupants will work collectively to ensure that the rules of order and decorum are respected, applied consistently, and to the same standards. As another one of my predecessors, the member for Regina Capel stated on December 12, 2012, at pages 13,215 and 13,216 of debates, quote, my task as speaker is to ensure that the intensity of feelings expressed around some issues is contained within the bounds of civility without infringing on the freedom of speech that members enjoy. The chair tries to ensure that our rules are adhered to in a way that encourages mutual respect. However, all members will recognize that ultimately the speaker must depend on their collective self-discipline to maintain order and to foster decorum. My authority to enforce the rules depends on the cooperation of the House. Our electors expect all members to make greater efforts to curb disorder and unruly behaviour. So I urge all members to reflect on how best to return to the House to the convivial, cooperative atmosphere I know all of us would prefer." Unquote. Étant donné l'esprit collégial que caractérise la Chambre et les vastes privilèges dont jouissent ses membres, personne, même pas le Président, ne peut no one, agir unilatéralement pour améliorer le respect du décorum dans cette enceinte. Même si, pour ma part, je suis fermement résolu à préserver la dignité et le décorum de la Chambre, mes efforts resteront vains si les députés n'assument pas la responsabilité de leur comportement et de leur conduite et ne déploient pas eux-mêmes des efforts pour agir de manière appropriée et civilisée. J'aurai donc besoin de votre aide pour obtenir des résultats. From what I have observed over the years as a member, the following issues have deteriorated and need to be addressed. First, excessive, disruptive and loud heckling must be toned down. Occasional heckling has always been a part of our proceedings, and a light-hearted or clever comment will often enhance debate rather than detract from it. However, far too often, heckling is boorish and rude, designed to intimidate, insult, or drown out others. Members have a right to be heard and to hear the proceedings going on around them. The frequent and time-consuming disorder it creates must stop. Excessive interruptions must be curtailed. Deuxièmement, bien que je sois déterminé à protéger Second, le privilège de la liberté et de parole nécessaire aux hauts débats, j'estime que nos idées et nos pensées sont trop, trop souvent teintées de, pro de propos provocateurs, ce qui donne lieu à des échanges tendus qui nuisent à la collégialité qui doit caractériser nos travaux. Nous avons déjà vu des députés comparer leurs collègues à Mussolini, traiter une autre personne de raciste ou crier des obscénités. J'accorderai aux députés la latitude nécessaire pour qu'ils expriment qu exprime leur opinion, mais les termes discutables et les déclarations inutilement provocatrices ne seront plus tolérées. Finalement, introduces a toxicity to our proceedings which hampers our ability to get things done. This includes coming up with fake titles for members in order to mock them, or comments that question their courage, their honesty, or their commitment to their country. I would also include comments designed to draw attention to the absence of members as a mean of embarrassing them, even though this is against our rules. As many of my predecessors have underscored, there are multiple places members must go to fulfill their duties. I will point out, there are examples of these sorts of comments on all sides of the House. Insofar as personal attacks can be limited, I will use whatever tools I have at my disposal to do so. Les problèmes que j'ai soulignés se manifestent surtout durant the la période des déclarations de députés et la période des questions. C'est malheureux period. parce que ce sont à ces moments 
de nos travaux que nous sommes le plus suivis par le public et observés dans les tribunes. Ces moments génèrent également beaucoup d'extraits largement diffusés sur les médias sociaux. Voilà les problèmes que je m'employerai principalement à résoudre. La Chambre est maîtresse de ces travaux et le Président en est le serviteur. La présidence, quant à elle, a le pouvoir d'appliquer les règles des débats pour maintenir l'ordre et le décorum afin que la Chambre puisse mener ses travaux de façon ordonnée. Le règlement de la Chambre prévoit expressément que le président doit maintenir l'ordre et le décorum, de même que de régler les questions de l'ordre. Ce devoir qui s'étend aux autres occupants du fauteuil s'accompagne de vastes pouvoirs concernant des questions aussi variées que le comportement et la tenue vestimentaire des députés, la conduite des affaires, les règles du débat et le désordre sur le parquet de la Chambre et dans les tribunes. As such, any challenge to the authority of the chair by refusing to respect a call to order, to withdraw language ruled to be unparliamentary, to cease irrelevance and repetition in debate, or to stop interrupting a member who has the floor, can be addressed through recourse to a number of options. For instance, the chair may recognize another member or refuse to recognize a member until the offending remarks are retracted and the member apologizes immediately in person or at a later time in writing to the speaker. As a last resort, the chair may name a member the most severe disciplinary power at the speaker's disposal. In the days and weeks ahead, as I proceed as outlined above, I will continue my discussions with individual members as well as with House officers and the different parties to see how we can join forces in our collective objective to improve the decorum in our proceedings. Je remercie les députés de leur attention et je, je les invite à réfléchir à ma déclaration d'aujourd'hui. Je précise aussi que les députés sont libres de venir me voir s'ils désirent discuter plus longuement de cette question. Je remercie les membres. I thank the members for your attention.